Today we're going to have an interview with four of the Martin, Shorty, Irwin, Vince, and Levina. They're all siblings that are Nichols, and they're going to talk to us about their um, time on the CPR line because it extends from one end to the other end and ended up in Nipigon. My dad first started working in Coldwell um, at the um, Jackfish. Oh, Jackfish. 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 Oh, sorry. Jackfish. Jackfish and then Coldwell. Yeah, I wasn't sure. And and then I think you went back to Jackfish, didn't you? We went to Coldwell for a you while. You used to go back and forth. Yeah. Because I can remember Mum getting us up and getting on the caboose to go back to Jackfish for work. Mm -hmm. Just to work or did we go live there <coughs> back and forth? Well, he was age of telegraph operator yeah. in Jackfish and Coldwell. When he was younger. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. I think that was during the strike, though, eh? No. Well. Because we, uh, mem I remember having the armed forces there watching the station after. The oh. One of my first memories. Yeah. Well, one of the, the only first memory I can remember is my dad told me when I was three years old, I was eating cookies with the German prisoners. And they were as nice as could be. Was. Well, he had a prisoner in a war camp at uh, uh, Nays, Nays, eh? Yes. Yeah. Also, Dad anywhere. had Dad had the a dog team that would deliver the mail up to the prisoner war camps up the uh, on the Steel River. Oh, wow! Yeah, we had a camp there, right? On the Steel River. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it was Jackfish. He used to go up yeah. to the camps because they. And then Make we had a camp them. at Bottle Cove, where yeah. the um, the National Marine Conservation Area is starting. And uh, my dad had to the the water was so rough. My dad had to uh, flag down the train to go get milk for us because we were all young. And uh, and then he went to Jackfish and got the milk. And then he flagged down another train to bring the milk back to us at the camp. Hmm. Yeah. Do you remember that? No, no. no. It's too young then. So you shut it off. Your dad and you first came from where? Any idea? My dad. Um, Pretty well, Jackfish. He came. He had to go to boarding school in Sherbrooke, Quebec. Oh. Okay. And his dad was the postmaster general in Jackfish. Oh. So it's in the family then, that's how he got yeah. his job along the line then. Pretty well, yep. But my, my, um, <laughs> my dad's um, grandfather was the station agent in Jackfish and my grandfather's brother was the station agent in Rossport. So it was in the whole family, the Nickel then. family. So when you were living in Jackfish Coldwater, were you living in the station house? Yes. Yeah. Coldwell. 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 <clears throat> yeah. Jackfish, we had a CPR house, right? Yes, we did. Yeah. And then we did live in the station for a while as well. Maybe you can say where Coldwell is exactly, because even I'm not sure exactly where Coldwell is. It's 15 miles east of Marathon. West. West. West, west, of west, west. Oh yeah, west fifteen of miles west. Of and is it still a community? I don't know. No, no. It's a ghost town. A ghost. Nothing town. Yeah, they got Jack camps, fish as well. camps there, right? Eh? Yep. And Jackfish as well. There's some camps there, but that's it. Mm -hmm. And that was Jackfish where I got sliced, eh? Mm -hmm. Coldwell has a maintained cemetery. Oh. Yep. Still from way back in the 1800s. Oh wow. There's some graves there. Mm -hmm. And there was, they just took a couple up on the 50 years after the accident in Colville. They took up the two graves and took the bodies to to, uh, to New York. With the Nichols? Yes. You're really? Yeah, they, they took the graves up. The Git Nickel, N-I-C-H-O-L. Yeah, it was oh, a different Nickel. Yeah, a yeah, different Nickel. nickel. Oh, yeah. isn't that interesting? My dad was holding the hoop up on the train. Yeah. That was it. And they were all killed. Three, eh? Three people? Four. Three or four. Four people. Four? I remember my mother telling me, get back in the house. And she was holding this guy in her arms. Yeah. Oh. And and they used to use our beds because we had those narrow beds with the, <laughs> yeah. uh, the 
the Middle lakes cots. folded yeah. under. Yeah. 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 And uh, they used For to stretches. use our beds as stretchers. And how many times did I go to bed? When I laid there, I'd look underneath the bed and make sure nothing's there. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they used to shake the bed. Tell me, Patty Bolton's here. Patty Bolton's here. <laughs> remember him? Do you oh, remember yeah. him alive? Yeah. yeah. He got killed on the tracks. Too. Oh, yeah. Too. yeah. I often think there must have been a lot of accidents on the railway line mm -hmm. in those days. I don't know if there's lots. There was. Yeah. Yeah, was well, two and pretty well killed. one at each station we've been at. Two and Hurt had killed. At the crossing, uh, yeah. And put in the freight shed yep. until yep. uh, somebody would come pick them up. I think that's one of my beds was used for that, too. So would there have been a highway in those days, or you were strictly by rail? Coldwell was strictly rail for a while, and then the highway opened yeah. when it completed to Wawa. Yeah, in 1954, dad, my dad bought a car. Yeah. And uh, he was actually the ambulance driver in Coldwell because nobody else had a car. <laughs> Plus, every Thursday night or every second Thursday night, he used to make a run the marathon for everybody to get all their booze, eh? <laughs> I remember that. Oh. He used to go and buy all the right yeah. the wine and everything. And he for used all the to people. him and Joe Moison used to um, drive Gail Lemieux and I to uh, Girl Guides in Marathon. Oh. And oh my God, well, I I could tell you all kinds of stories. I had to drive one day. My dad was so drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. Like yeah. it's funny yeah. now. Hey, we're yeah. still alive. Yeah, those things happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So where did you go to school when you lived in Coldwell? There's a school there. Oh, yeah. well, there was a school Yeah, there. we said to walk down the tracks. Oh, okay. Actually, the footing is still there for that school. Yes, the cement okay. footing, yeah. Wow. And I was tracing a map in the window when that car accident happened. Oh. I was at school. Wow. Yeah. How big a school would it have been? One, one, one room. room. One, one room. room. One room, yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably wow. 25, eh? Mm-hmm. Awesome. But there was a pond down there, too, eh? In Coldwell? Yep. Used to play hockey pond. with Bud Aylward. And uh, I had Morse for shark skates. I used to be a Montreal Canadiens fan, but I changed. Oh, big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so what did you change to? Toronto. Oh, no. Well, you can go oh. sit over there. She married into it. Yeah, I married into Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> so you all learned to skate on a pond then? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And we used to have our own outdoor rink in Herkut and Dorian. And my dad used to have skates. He never, he never tied them up. And he could write his name on the ice. Mm -hmm. Wow! And so okay, you went from Coldwell and Jackfish to Hercut to Hercut and, and Dorian and Dorian. And what kind of a house in Dorian and Hercut then? Station. Station. Station, Station in Dorian. Long and then narrow one. Nipigan used to pick Erwin and I up, and take us on their team to go, to play in Thunder Bay. Oh. Okay. So yeah. Herc I, I, I don't know, know if you played with us. I guess we I were older I don't remember that. Yeah. You well, might be a little older. You're too old. Yeah. So where yeah, was Herc at drink? Too, what? too old too to old. play on uh, Pee Wee's or Pee whatever it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I know what you're saying. So yeah. Levina was there with Mercury Morris Bouvier. He was trying <laughs> to flirt with her again. <laughs> oh, I remember that. I remember, I remember him though. <laughs> and we were staying in that, uh, the one in Fort William. Right near the, I guess the old hockey rink. Uh, Edward, Prince Edward, maybe Prince Arthur. Prince Arthur, Prince Arthur or the. You were there. We had Lady. the stairs up, and we used to Royal throw Lady. things down six floors because you could see the floor down below. Huh. Is that so the when, one when did we come to Nippium? Fort William. No, yeah, fifty-nine. Fifty-nine. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say fifty-eight. Maybe. That's when uh, Gordon Marshall's house went down. No, I mean, when it opened up there. Before that. No, hey? we were living here when that happened. No, no, I think I we. Was, I think it was maybe a was year before. It might have been a year before. Oh, you may have been because you were here in sixteen, seventeen, probably rebel, and out you went somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, Shorty. <laughs> oh yeah, that was, so that was fifty nine. That happened because it was sixtieth year this year that that accident happened. Oh uh, yeah. There. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a whole lot of thing in the li in the museum about that. Mm -hmm. that well, happening. we we did live in Hercut. I went to high school from Hercut yes. on the school bus to 
Lakeview in Thunder Bay in grade oh, nine. You like to lay, oh. Where'd you go to high school, Erwin? Niprock. Oh, and Charlie at Niprock. Niprock. Yeah, yeah Niprock. Oh, you were the only one. That yeah, went I went to Niprock for three months in grade 11. Okay. And my dad wasn't going to pay for me anymore to go to stay in Thunder Bay. Ah. So I lasted three months in Red Rock. And my mom said, if I get a job, I can, I can quit. So I did. <laughs> Okay. And I've been going to school ever since. So tell us just a little bit about in Hercut. What activities was it in Hercut? I mean, was Hercut very big? I have no idea. It had a hotel, a store. Yeah. A rink. A uh, hockey rink, outdoor rink. Where was the right. hotel in Hercut? Right across from the right station. Right behind the station. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right near the tracks. Downtown. That was downtown Hercut then. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the main highway, a pool hall there. It was also the main oh, highway. Yeah. Singleton. Singleton had a pool. Singleton. Jimmy yeah. Singleton. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But and is it Hercut or Dorian that had that dance hall that used to be so popular? The community center. The yeah. Community Herkut center. Community right? center, right yeah. down close to the station as yeah. well. There. Yep. Yeah. 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 I can remember that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I ran for uh, Gerard Aubin. Uh, ran for um, king, and I ran for queen. I had to sit at the window and sell tickets. As soon as I saw a new car come to the store, I'd run over there and sell them a ticket. Huh. So I won. I won the the, the Hercut Queen by selling tickets, <laughs> and I'm still selling tickets today. So. <laughs> Anything else you did in Hercut? I don't know. I Hercut. What else was? Uh, used to babysit for the people that had the mink farm. The quarter moshes lived in Hercut too. Yeah. We played hockey on the same rink. Ooh. I remember uh, his name, they call him Joe now, but yep. Lionel. Him and Vincent and Earl were fooling around in one of these little carts. My dad used to build us all these little carts. Well, up at the, up at to the, drive uh, around. Up at the lake. He, he got his finger caught in the uh, chain. In the chain and it cut it off. And he had to come here, Dr. Summerlee, and Joe was telling me that it was pretty brutal. I guess Dr. so. Dr. Summerlee yeah. probably had a few. Yeah, then. wow. So he got his finger, whatever, cut so off. So that's the same family then that were in the house that went down. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely, yes. Because yes. I was driving and I got stuck. <laughs> so he put his hand down like this and he put it near the chain. He said, okay, go ahead. So of course I pressed it and Cut it off. Yeah. Getting way back, Levina went through Mrs. Allen's store in. Oh yeah, in that car. In uh, one of those little carts in Coldwell. My dad built she it. drove that. Yeah. Right we into her we always had motorized cars to drive. Oh. Always when we were little, he used to build them out of washing machine engines. So your dad was very inventive, Bob. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, we went to Ottawa one time, and we were two weeks late. He invented uh, electric scissors. We missed it. He missed it by two weeks. Oh. You don't remember? As an invention. So I remember. Yeah, yeah, he was an inventor. He was. Oh, yeah. He built an electric car, too. Like, um, yep. actually, Herman Brochu bought it. Oh, wow. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he made, he built a boat in 1950 to 54, a steel boat. And uh, in, in Jackfish, in Jackfish, and he built a steel other boat. My mom used to take out par parties in the steel small boat, and my dad would take parties out to go fishing for the derby. That was a 26 foot cabin cruiser, right? Yeah, steel, yeah. all steel. Yeah, whatever happened to it? It ended up in Nipigon. Yeah, he sold it at the end. Yeah, oh, did I? But it was finished. I don't think it's here now, right? Is it finished? It's finished or now. I yeah. think it was gone. finished, yeah. yeah. It was a nice boat. He sold it to a Mike Zale in Thunder Bay. That's right. Yeah. What's your time there? Okay. And so you've got all of that area, and then Nipigon would have been the last place that your dad came to st to work then. Yep. Yeah. And you thought about 58, 59? Yeah, and okay. he, he went, we went to Creighton Mines, oh. and I was going to fail grade nine. And I didn't know anybody at Sudbury Tech. I passed with flying colors. 
So you know I was a social butterfly a long time ago before this. And uh, um, now where's Crate and Mines? I have no idea. It's on your Sudbury, 12 Sudbury. miles out of Sudbury, right in your lively. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Three miles out of life. So we only stayed there maybe six months. Yeah, it wasn't very long. Couldn't stand the noise of the mine. It was always running. The, uh, you could hear the. I think they held us back from school, right? Like, I mean, that six months we lost, didn't we? No, no. I didn't. No? Mm -mm. No, I thought we did. No, no. No, no. Because we yeah, all know no teachers in Port Cold all at one time. Yeah. For a half yeah. a year. Yeah. Hmm? So what did you do for a half a year then, Urban, with no teacher? Well, I guess we just played. <laughs> 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 I don't know if it's somebody else filled in, but I don't yeah. recall. I don't recall that either. So because you were on the railway line all the time, do you people remember the dentist on the railway or oh, the, yeah. oh, well, the we, horse dentist. We don't <laughs> want to talk about that. <laughs> I, I call him the horse I, dentist. I personally went up the stairs and then right down the other side on the other side just walked away. Really? Oh Vincent, they were really horse doctors. Well they doctors. were brutal. They were horse doctors. Yeah I know about the old call them that. <laughs> I just remember him coming to Nipigon. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, yep. And so I imagine he traveled all along, those stopped mm -hmm. at every place then that you would have been at. Oh yeah. Yep, oh yeah. I, I think he was a veterinarian. <laughs> oh, holy I God. used to pick blueberries and sell holy them to man. the cook cars. 11, 11 quart basket for six dollars. Wow. They thought they died and went to heaven. They used to let us climb on a steam engine and throw coal off and sell it. Sell by the tub, 25 cents. <laughs> oh, yeah, down the coal oh, Jackfish. Yeah. Coal law, right? Probably jackfish. Yeah. Because that's where they loaded all the coal. And were you ever aware of the uh, the schools that went on the rail, on the railway line? There was a school coach or something that you could go to school, and they would give you an assignment and then come back. I didn't know if that was. No, I'd be be probably before our time. Okay. Yeah. Because any place I've went, there's always been a school. Yeah. Always been a school. And okay, we're going to wind up that part, and then the next one will just be about your stay in Nipigon and some of your stories. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to continue talking with um, this group of people on now their adventures when they lived in the CPR station in Nipigon. And your dad came from Hercut to Nipigon, right? Creighton Mines to Nipigon. Oh, from Creighton Mines to yep. Nipigon. Creighton Mines yeah, to Nipigon. Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. And have you got about the time? Okay, you've said what year events about? Well, we moved here, I think it was in 68. 58. 58, sorry. 58, 58. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you've all stayed here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. Tell us something about living in the station then. How big was the station? I mean... It had two floors uh, upstairs. We lived upstairs. There was four bedrooms upstairs, right? Yeah. And one downstairs for mom and dad? No. No, just no, four? The, just the station part and the freight shed was downstairs. Yeah. And um, and upstairs is where we lived. Okay. Yeah. And there used to, we used to laugh because there's four bars or five bars on the main street. And we yeah, four. Look out our window and see them all. <laughs> right, right. Every Saturday night was live entertainment, entertainment from the, our window. Yeah. Uh, I remember uh, Byron Wowie getting beat up by some of the police officers oh. and now he's a gentleman today. Yeah. So yeah. the story about when they got robbed, uh, Dad said, no, I don't, you got to tell me if this is true or not. And Dad said if Art Hanula wasn't there, he would have took that guy down. Was that true? Smaller than I was. Well, no. Art Hanula. He didn't yeah, say that? Might have. I would think. Because somebody said they might have had a, a gun in the safe or something. Well, there's a pistol in the safe. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, that's what I thought. Yeah. So tell us what happened on that, because that's one of the famous stories, of course, about <clears throat> CPC. Well, I guess the guy got away, but now, I don't know where this was. I don't know if my mother seen the guy on TV or what, but she happened to notice he was wearing my dad's watch. So she phoned the cops, and the cops picked him up. And they got him. So Shorty, you have Whatever happened to the watch? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, there we go, right there. That's right here. 
Yeah. So how did you get it? Oh, you got it back because... You got it back. That's how he got charged. He got nine years for robbing the station here. <sighs> yep. She's seen it on TV, I think she, it was. She's seen his picture in the paper. The newspaper? Okay. Picture in the newspaper. Where did that come yeah, from? American she... newspaper. So she called the penitentiary and and they said, that's the guy that robbed our station in Nipigon. They went and found the watch and we got it back. Yeah. So... He got it back and then I had it and he wanted it, so I gave it to him. So Why how that? did your dad, like, what happened to your dad then during this robbery? Like, <laughs> this guy came from nowhere? No, he was here. The Governor General of Ontario was here, I guess. Mm -hmm. And he stayed for two, three days. This guy was checking the station out then. And my mother knew who he was too because he was coming into the station and talking <clears throat> to my dad and everything. And that day, I think this all happened around 11 o'clock when the Governor General was just going to leave and so everybody was paying attention to him. And that's when he robbed the station. I remember I stand at the Liberty Cafe, right there, and mm. watch this guy open the shed up. And I never paid any attention to it. A few minutes later, oh, the station was robbed. Yeah. So this guy got away. And he tied up my dad. Tied and up. put him in the freak shed. Tied our hand yeah. up with one arm and he couldn't get out. But apparently my dad chewed the rope off. So. Yeah. So your mom wasn't aware that 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 had happened because she was up No, she was upstairs, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Unreal though. Yeah. And there's so few robberies in Nippigan really oh, that yeah. that was yeah. sort of But and deal. and the he handed them the box of cash. You know, the thing that had all the cash in it, but he didn't hand them the money that came from the Royal Bank. I'm pretty sure those were bonds. Yeah, but anyway he they didn't handle he just asked for the cash. Yeah. So but those were bonds in the other package, oh, okay. apparently. So, anyway, any idea how much money you got away with? I mean, would there been a lot of money in those it, days? It might have been. I don't know. You probably have a news article on it. <laughs> Likely somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't yeah, say. I don't it. remember. It might have been three hundred dollars. Yeah, I was going to say it likely wasn't the amount it would be yeah. today. I did so. find a picture, but I I couldn't find it now. Right. Like because you move, <coughs> but. I used to have a picture. If I find it, I'll make sure you get it. So what do you remember about the trains coming and going then? I just remember that station being freezing cold in the winter time when you waited for the train. Really? I don't remember that. When we, were, we used to wait for the train. Every Sunday morning, Joyce Giddings would come and make us <clears throat> pancakes and, yeah. and breakfast every Sunday morning. Yeah, And Joyce That's, used to babysit pick up the mail Joyce and then bring it over to the post office after. Oh. She used to do that like every once a week. Yeah. Now whether the mail only come once a week, and maybe it did, but she used to do that. Okay. And my mom used to work at Zechner's in the meat department. That okay. was her job. And yeah. in those days, that. we charged groceries. We didn't pay for them. You charged them and paid it on payday paid. at Zechner's. Oh, I didn't know she worked there. Yeah, in the meat department. Did you Did you know that? Not really. No, I didn't know. Yeah. It's funny how yes, things Yes, she worked at Zachner's. Yeah? Over on this side of the street. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just think the trains today compared to the trains then. Yeah. Yeah, there used to be three or four uh, passenger trains a day stop mm -hmm. east and west. Right. Yep. Right. And the freight trains and... In nothing compared to today. In 1965, no. I, I, uh, we, I got married, and everybody went to the church. All our relatives and everything. They forgot me at, at the oh. station. I was wondering where, where is everybody? Well, I wasn't going to run down the street in my wedding dress when they found out I wasn't there. They came back to get me. Oh, holy. <laughs> yeah. Who so married I married you, Father Myers. Father Myers. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you all were at the station and then you all got jobs in Nipigon then. Mm -hmm. Pretty well? Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of amazing we all stayed here pretty well. And yeah. And uh, Some of the kids are gone, but there's still some around. My yeah. first job was working at the newspaper. I did every job in the newspaper except run the press. You and I rose, there. I used here? to, yeah, in North Shore Sentinel. Oh. And I used to drive uh, Chuck McCoot's car 
And one day they played a joke on me from Elgar Wright's. And they put a, a bare naked woman on the back of a calendar on the back. Oh. And the police stopped me for indecent exposure. Oh. And, and those guys are all laughing. They just thought it was funny. I said, what do you mean? I grabs the, I grabs the picture, rips it off the car. It was Chuck, Chuck McEwitt's car that I was driving around in. Big Chrysler. I used to, yeah. So when you, you three were working at the plywood mill, the plywood mill had not been built when you were younger then. You remember? 50s. I don't know. Man. Vince, do you remember that, that there was no plywood mill down there? I don't know. No, I don't remember that. I thought it was here when we come here. It was oh, here, yes. It was, yeah. okay. In the 50s, sometimes it was built, I yeah. think. Okay. All four of us worked at, at that plywood mill. One time. At one and time. they hesitated about hiring me because I would be in management. Oh. But I got the job. Anyway. <laughs> who, said, were, who were all the agents that were uh, operators that worked here? Buddy Elward, Gordon Elward, Barry, Barry, uh, ba Ronnie Barry, Ron oh, Barry, Ron Barry. I don't think Ron Barry was here. Esco. Um, well, I know he was down in Gurney. There was another Finlander guy, Art David Minica. Art Hanula. Oh. Yeah. Jim uh, Moore. Jim Moore and yeah. the French guy the just guy across just the street, up the hill from you. Uh, Bouchard, Paul Bouchard. Paul Bouchard, Bouchard yeah. yeah. And where did Warren Miller come in? Before yes, he was, he was op always uh, there. Operator. There's more as too. Long as we, uh, what's his name? Because it was. He still lives here. His son. He died young. One of those. Paul Bouchard. No, no, no? not him. Another one. Actually, I just. He lives just up above your house, Erwin. Oh, uh, Crawford. 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 Yes. Crawford. Oh, I didn't know that's where he worked. There's more others too. Not this boy. His Bill dad. Millen or a Mil oh, Bill Millen. Millen family before well, long before we came. Right. Millers. Yeah. No, Mill. Billy Mill. Billy Mill. Bill Millen. At the CPR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, Warren J. Miller, I think I was his name. That yeah, he was yeah. an insurance guy, eh? Or he was. Yeah. He sold insurance he as well as Yeah, I know, but Warren Miller was insurance. An operator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. an operator. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of people involved. Oh, there's we? probably more involved. that we didn't even think of. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just kind of wondered what, what kind of a job, what, what was your da dad responsible for working there? Tickets, telegraph, telegraph. Yeah, they did. Yeah. And, uh, but but he was the uh, he the was, agent. He was the agent. Yeah. There was you always to, an operator the there too. Telegraph operator. Mm -hmm. It's funny in Coldwell and Jackfish, he used to do all the books for the the town. I guess it was. Or called. the school. Yeah. For the school. They used everything. to call him the mayor. <laughs> Well, because you know they were a small things. town, yeah. So when he comes here, then you're, he's the agent, and he has yeah. all the other people work for him then mm -hmm. that did those jobs. Yeah. 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 Okay. So your dad had to know how to send the telegraph. Telegraph. Yep. Wow. Yep. Interesting though. There's oh, another one. Yeah. I, it's a funny one. Uh, passed away from Hercut. He was. He worked for Dad, but I think. Damn. Well, he owns the taxis in Thunder Bay. Oh, yeah? All them taxis, Roach's taxis. You want them gambling. He worked for Dad here, too. Owns all the taxis. Well, he's dead now, but. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we were, before this started, we were just talking about how hard it was then for you to see the station go down. What, what sort of started the fact that it was time for them to remove the station? All the operators idea? and agents were gone. Didn't need them. Oh, so, yeah. Because uh, uh, another didn't thing, need telegraph. Anymore. Yeah. Another that was thing, the only was communication it. across Canada was the telegraph. Right. There was no stops all the way from Sault Ste. Marie to Thunder Bay. Just straight through. Didn't need anybody. Wow. So. Mm -hmm. So did they just smash it down, or how did they? Yeah. Mm -hmm.
That's because I mean you could tell that we had the committee to try and save the station. Yeah, yeah. We spent a lot of time those people. Mm -hmm. I know Ethel Douglas and Anita Lang were the two main ones for oh, Save yeah. Our sure. Station, mm -hmm. trying to save it. So do you think that the town office library is a fair replica of the station? Fair. Fair. Yeah. How's I wish that? there was, I think the town wished there was an upstairs as well, but mm -hmm. there, but it uh, wasn't the same color. Ours was <coughs> insole brick or something like that. But, right, right. You know that brick that they used yeah. to put on the outside? It was different. The station at Founders Museum is a replica almost of the nipping station yes before they put the insole brick on it yeah oh and yeah, actually i've seen pictures similar. that that station was similar to many places right yes that design yeah. mm -hmm. of the of the railway station that's the same right to many many places and they got those beams that come down like this eh over there yeah yeah those are that's those that are reminds me of the cpr station oh, okay. yeah yeah yeah. The only difference is the outside color. It's not right. real dark. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but it was that color before. It was the dark inso brick. Yeah, brown oh, station. Yeah. Yeah. Dark brown, eh? A beige and dark brown. Yeah. Just like the town office. Yeah. It originally was that color. Yeah. And then they put that inso brick on or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, I always think I wish I had that clock from that station. Oh, yeah. 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 Me too. Be nice. And you know the picture? There used to be one of the group of seven hanging up in the in the station part, in the lobby, eh? I don't know where that picture ever went. Well, somebody yeah. nipping it might have it. Yeah. It was pretty big, though. But it was it was a nice one of the group of seven. Picture of what? of the group of seven, one of the pictures, a scenery picture. So did you them. travel by train at all, four of you? Were you oh, yes. travel? Always. Yeah. I went to Winnipeg on the train for the Boy Scouts when I was uh, Did you? Yeah. Yeah. And then I drove Everybody when, else when went by plane, I think, and I had to go <laughs> by train. Yeah. Because it was But free. we all had passes, eh? We could right. go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And when when we lived in Coldwell, the uh, Nipigon Flyers was coming to Nipigon, coming down to play hockey in Marathon, and they paid me money to cheer for them. <laughs> oh, <holy. laughs> Yeah, you didn't know that? Nope. Well, Herman used to deliver pop to Coldwell. Herman and uh, Marshall Borsk. Oh, yeah. 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 By, by, by rail? Yeah. No, by truck. Oh, by truck then. That was after 54, 55, I guess. Mm -hmm. wow. And so my mom started 4-H out of the station and the 4-H clubs ended up expanding. We had about five clubs in the town. Cheryl Meekel, Mrs. Millen, uh, Andrew, uh, Anne-Marie Schnellhart, and um, Bonnie Thompson was my assistant leader when I became a leader. And so it was kind of exciting, eh? Like, uh, it, you know, when you think about it, I was probably in 4-H for probably 12 to, I think 18 you could only go to. That's the size you could go to. You were in Scout Shorty? Were yes. you, Erwin? Yes. Oh. In Nippy and yeah. Vince? No. I don't remember being in Scouts. Mm -hmm. No, because you went to high school right away, right from here. Yeah, Mary. right from here, yeah. As soon yeah. As come. yeah. Mm -hmm. My dad was involved with hockey lots. Okay. And he, he was actually an elk too before. Right. And he uh, he coached right through, and then Erwin took over, and he's been doing it for 50 years probably. Probably longer, 60 years. Right. No, he's been involved. No, not 60. <laughs> uh, Rep, <laughs> he <laughs> playing for the Elks. He played for the Elks when he was younger. In Nipigon Elks, and then, then he started refereeing. I don't think he's ever been a year. Forty some doing years something. being. Oh, a, for sure. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Volunteering for the. Uh, was your mom mom a member of a? Uh, my mom belonged to the Elks. I thought I remember. Yeah. 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 And any organized the community center in her like she belonged to everywhere. 
she taught 4 H and her kid too. Right, I see with Mrs. Boyko. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. So your family is a big part of the history of Dippigan, really, because you've all been active here. Yeah. For a long time. For a long time. We have. Yep. Okay. We're down to two minutes. Anything else quickly you would like to add? When when my husband passed away, he asked me if I wanted to move out of Nipigan. I said, just give me a couple of days while I think about it. And then I'm like, <laughs> all my friends are here and I know everybody. Why would I go to Thunder Bay where I don't know anybody? Yep. So um, I, we decided to stay in Nipigan and he said, well, if you want to eat, you'll have to come out to Fraser Lake because I'm going fishing. And, and he used to, I used to have to go out and pick up his limit of fish so he could go fishing again. And then he'd come home and he said, where's my fish? I gave it away to the seniors. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways. We're very active in the community. What should sure. we do with this watch? Keep it, boy. Keep it. That's pretty. That's yours. We should do a story and put it in the museum, eh? <laughs> Do a story and put it in a museum. Get it fixed, Shorty. You didn't yes. get it fixed yet. This oh, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to keep wrap safe. up and thanks to <laughs> four siblings for sharing their time with us. Yeah.